Hello developers and welcome to PHP Developers TV, your home for everything you need to know to be a knowledgeable PHP developer. I'm your host as always, Scott Keck Warren. As developers, a large portion of our time is spent testing code that we've just written. In a traditional testing cycle, we'll write some code and then manually test it. We'll enter some inputs and find that it causes an error, so we'll write a little bit more code to fix that error and test it again, only to find another set of inputs that fail. We'll slowly work through this process until we feel confident that everything is operating correctly. But how do we know that the first set of bad data we found is still error-free? How do we know it's still error-free a year from now? We could continue to manually test all these permutations, but almost all of the time they're going to continue to run perfectly. Because it's very time-consuming to run through all these permutations, we're not going to keep this up. Using tools like PHPUnit, we can create automated tests that will make testing our code infinitely more repeatable. Embracing test-driven development will allow us to quickly build a suite of automated tests that will allow us to improve the maintainability and the reliability of our code. What is test-driven development? Test-driven development is a test-first software development process that uses short development cycles to write very specific test cases and then modify our code so that the tests pass. Test-driven development consists of five phases that we will repeat as we modify our code. Each of these phases happens very quickly, and we might go through all five phases in less than a minute. Test-driven development was rediscovered by Kent Beck while working on the Smalltalk language and has been documented extensively in his book, Test-Driven Development by Example. The book is an excellent primer for working with test-driven development as it works through several examples of how to use test-driven development and also explains some techniques for improving code why you should be using test-driven development. Let's say it's 4 p.m. before a long weekend, and your boss comes to you and asks you to make a small change to your code base. How confident are you that if you make the change, you're not going to get a call on Sunday? Because test-driven development forces you to create automated tests, you'll have the confidence that when you make the changes, your weekend isn't going to be interrupted with a new bug. While test-driven development works best for greenfield applications, it's a benefit to anyone working on a brownfield application as well. Getting automated tests wrapped around untested code can quickly allow us to determine if changes we're making cause unexpected changes in behavior. Brownfield applications tend to require a little more finesse to get them set up for automated testing, so don't get discouraged if it's frustrating at first. How do you use test-driven development? In test-driven development by example, Kent Beck outlines five phases. One, quickly add a new test. Two, Run all tests and see the new one fail. 3. Make a little change. 4. Run all tests and see them all succeed. 5. Refactor to remove duplication. Each step should be small, with at most 10 new lines of code being added. If we find ourselves doing more than that, we're working on too large of a change, and we need to break it into smaller pieces. Quickly add a new test. The first thing we're going to do is write a failing test. We'll use this failing test to help us determine when we've achieved our expected functionality. It's important that the test is succinct, and then it's looking at how a single change will affect our code. Run all the tests and see the new one fail. In this step, we're going to run the test to make sure our test fails before we move on to the next phase. It's very easy to write a test that doesn't fail, so we always run our test to verify it's failing before moving on to the next phase. As a small aside, the wording for this phase says run all the tests, but as our test suite grows, this will take an unproductively large amount of time. We'll want to short circuit this and only run the test file or just our new test. Many IDEs can run a single test or a single file, and it's worth spending time figuring out how to get this working as it will make us more productive. Make a little change. Now our goal is to change the smallest amount of code possible to get that test to pass. We don't want to change any more than is necessary because that extra bit of change wasn't made using test-driven development and is potentially not tested. We don't need perfect code in this phase, we just need code that makes the test pass. It's very easy to get caught up in making sure everything is perfect, but that's not the goal here. Perfect comes later. Run all the tests and see them all succeed. Now that we've made our change, we can run our tests and see that it passes. If it doesn't, then we'll just jump back to phase 3 and keep making small changes until it does. Refactor to remove duplication. Now that we have all of our tests passing, we're going to take a break and inspect both our test code and our code under test to see where we can make changes so it's easier for future developers to read and understand. As features are added, methods and classes will get larger and contain duplication, so our primary focus in this phase is to remove that duplication. 
Because we're using test-driven development, changes to remove this duplication are painless because we can quickly run our unit tests again to make sure we didn't make a mistake. Other things we should look for while we're doing this process? Are the methods and classes and variables easy to read? Do they express intent? Can we move logic into a superclass? Can we move logic into a shared trait? Repeat. Now that we've completed a single test-driven development cycle, we can start back at the beginning with a new test. Conclusion. Test-driven development is a software development process that focuses on a test-first methodology, so we can develop software that allows us to feel comfortable about making changes. This is done using the steps write a test, verify it fails, write some code, verify the test pass, and refactor. Using this process will improve the maintainability and reliability of our code. Thank you for watching our video. If you found it helpful, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help others find us. If you're working with test-driven development, let us know how it's going in the comments below. Are there things you're finding difficult, or is it easy as pie?